The hour of convening having arrived, all members of the House will please report to their seats. All members of the House will please report to their assigned seats. The clerk will ring the bell. All members will please report to the floor of the House to their assigned seats. We are about to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Representative Perkle, Chairman Perkle, Chairman would you please? Okay, just try making sure Representative Carpenter got voted present. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. I hope all of you had a great weekend, a beautiful weather weekend. Ready to go to work this week. We will begin our day today with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 4th House District, Representative Casey Carpenter. Representative Carpenter. Brothers and sisters of the House, it's always a pleasure to come up here and stand in the great pulpit of the great David Ralston. I know it's very hard of you, I know it's very hard for you to believe that in fact I even know a pastor. Pastor Stan Lester is not even my pastor. He is simply a friend, someone that shares the love of high school sports, shares the love of cheering for the University of Georgia, and watching our kids grow up. I will say next year, however, Leader Burns, he will be cheering for the Georgia Southern Eagles because his son Evans signed a scholarship to play football there. Pastor Lester has a knack for bringing God's word to the relevance in the 21st century. I will say in advance, Today, we might be voting for sports gambling, so pre please pray for me in advance. After the pledge, we will be laying hands on people in the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Pastor Stan Lester. As I left my house this morning, my wife asked me, how do you feel about today? I said, I'm not that concerned about the devotion, but I'm terribly concerned about the introduction. Thank you, Speaker Ralston and Representative Carpenter for this invitation to address the House today. I want to thank each of you for your leadership, for your willingness to serve, and for your effort to make Georgia a better place for all of us. In the 2004 Olympics held in Athens, Greece, Matthew Emmons was the best in the world at the three-position 50-meter rifle competition. As they competed, Emmons built such a lead that when he got to the last shot, he had a lead that was almost insurmountable. When he got to his last shot, all that Emmons had to do was hit the target. He was the best in the world. He didn't have to have a bullseye. He just had to hit the target, anywhere on the target. He got to his last shot, and Emmons took aim. He shot a shot and bullseye. When Emmons looked up at the scoreboard, the scoreboard read zero. 
To his dismay, Matthew Emmons had shot the target to the left of the, tar of the target intended. He had hit the right target. He had hit a bullseye, but at the wrong target. It was a defining moment for Matthew Emmons. That day, instead of finishing first and winning the gold medal, Matthew Emmons finished in eighth place. Every life has a few defining moments. All of, our life has, all of our lives have moments that define us. Maybe this is a defining moment for us, the season we're in, what we're dealing with. Great leaders leverage those defining moments to see great things happen and to shift culture. There's a moment in Israel's history that's recorded in Jeremiah 29. It's a moment that speaks of the potential present when we get involved and we participate. Israel's being, Israel's being held captive in Babylon. And the word comes through Jeremiah and says this in verse number 4. Thus says the Lord to all who are carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat their fruit, take wives, have children. Let your sons and your daughters take wives and husbands and have children. That they may increase and not be diminished. And seek the peace of the city where you live. Because... As it prospers, you'll prosper. I think that one of the things that we take away is this, that great leadership shifts culture through involvement. For each of us, build houses, prosper, keep growing. Jeremiah is saying shift culture by engaging in the world that, that, that you're placed in. Visions about one day, cultures about every day. As leaders, we have the unique opportunity to look forward and to look at the present at the same time. We have a vision where we eventually want to be, and we establish culture where we are. Great leadership understands that vision is described, but culture is modeled. Jeremiah says, stay engaged, that you'll increase and not diminish. Vision can't be demonstrated, but eventually it becomes a reality because culture models it every day. Recently, I had somebody speak to me, and while they were sharing with me, I had recently met them, and, and in our second conversation, this gentleman looks at me, and, and he says to me, you look like somebody that used to work out. I don't even know what that means. The problem was that I had a great vision, but a bad culture. My culture, my everyday existence did not line up with the vision that I had for myself. And ultimately, I end up looking like someone that used to work out. Great leadership works together to create a better tomorrow. He says, seek the peace in the city that I've sent you to. Because when that city prospers, you'll prosper. Sometimes that's making tough decisions. Sometimes that's holding one another accountable. Sometimes that's pressing into one another. Sometimes that's encouraging one another in unique ways. Representative Carpenter said that I, I, my son just signed an athletic scholarship to play football at Georgia Southern. He also plays basketball, and we're in the middle of the state basketball tournament. A couple of games ago, we, we were playing, and our school starts three freshmen and two seniors. My son is one of the seniors. And at, at, at halftime, one of the freshmen that is an exceptional player, they went to the locker room, they came out. There was a guy on the other team that was, was just tearing us up. We couldn't, we couldn't stop him, had nothing for him. And my son looked at the freshman on our team and said, tell him what you told me coming out of the locker room. Well, he hadn't told him anything. And the freshman looked at my, my son and said, what are you talking about? He said, go ahead, tell him what you told him, tell what you told me. And he said, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So my son looks at the opposing player that is tearing us up and says, he said he's going to kick your tail the second half. Well, he went out and did that. Sometimes we have to push one another, believe in one another, help one another. That's what Jeremiah is saying. Be the best you can be. Be willing to take a risk. Be willing to believe that that, that culture can produce a reality, a vision that we all hope to see happen. Again, I want to say to every single one of you, thank you. Thank you for the courage to stand, to lead. I want to say thank you from 
from my family with four children, how much I appreciate all that you do on a, on a weekly and on a daily basis to help the culture be established that helps us realize the vision of a better tomorrow for Georgia. Let's pray together. Father, we're so thankful for the men and the women of this house. Thank you for the leadership, leadership Ross, uh, Chairman, uh, uh, House Speaker Ralston, those who lead. I thank you, Lord, for the amazing gifts that are represented, represented here. God, men and women that understand that their decisions matter. I thank you for the wisdom and the direction. I thank you for the conviction that they bring to these moments. And I pray that, God, that wisdom and that conviction would be realized throughout this day and the remaining uh, moments uh, as they meet together. Father, we lean into you and thank you for your peace and your grace that you give us in these moments when we feel like, God, so many things are, are, are moving in different directions. It's been a tough season for everybody in this room and for those that we lead. And we pray that, God, you would give us the, the wisdom and the understanding to know how to lead well, and we know you will. In Jesus' name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will please unlock the doors. Before I recognize Chairman Hogan, could I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention, please? Uh, testing will be going on until 11 a.m. Gives you about another 40 minutes to get downstairs. If you have not been tested today, please take care of that before 11 a.m. Chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and have found it to be correct. And I've got a math question today. Jack is 69 and has a girlfriend, 23. How much money does Jack have? All I'm going to say, Chairman, is that all of those sayings that you have shared with us this session will be compiled in a book and published at the end of the session, and I predict it will become a bestseller immediately. At least I'll buy one, and I think Representative Noel Williams will. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection 
to the confirmation of the journal. The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, on our 59th, Ms. Fallon be established in the order of business during the first part of the period of unanimous consent. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 653 by Representative Jaspers of the 11th Stevens of the 164th, Green of the 151st Knight of the 130th Paul of the 32nd, Building Title and Act to Amend, Code Section 2645. The official code of Georgia annotated relating to definitions relative to the Georgia Pharmacy Practice Act. Health and Human Services. House Bill 654 by President of Hatchet of the 150th and Jaspers of the 11th. The bill being titled Act to Amend Code Section 22-164. The official code of Georgia annotated relating to local five mill share funds. Appropriations. House Bill 655 by President of Wilson of the 80th, Oliver of the 82nd, Evans of the 83rd, and Holcomb of the 81st. Bill be titled Act of Men and Act to incorporate the city of Brookhaven. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 656 by Representative Houston of the 170th Green to the 151st, LaHood of the 175th, Tankersley the 160th, and Wilson of the 80th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Title 10 of the Official Code of Georgia and Tater relating to commerce and trade. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 657 mm. by Representative Crow of the 110th. Weed Hour the 119th, Hitchens the 161st, Lumsden the 12th, and Gravelly the 67th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Chapter 2 of Title 47 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to the Employees Retirement System of Georgia. Retirement. House Bill 658 by Representative Paul the 32nd. Bill be titled Act to Amend the NAC creating the Frank Hart Airport Authority. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 659 by Representative Roberts the 52nd, Blackman the 146th, Rich the 97th, Couch of the 50th, and Clark of the 108th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the Physical to Georgia Annotator relating to primaries and elections generally. Special Committee on Election Integrity. House Bill 660 by Rep Representative Oliver of the 82nd, Carson the 46th, Blackman of the 146th, Dreyer of the 59th, Mathiac the 73rd, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend an act known as the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority Act of 1965. Transportation. House Bill 661 by Representative Washburn of the 141st, Dickey the 140th, and Mathis of the 144th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 8 of Title 48. The official code of Georgia and Tater related to joint custody and municipal sales and use taxes. Ways and means. House Bill 662 by Representative Lopez of the 86th, Abstration of the 104th, McLaren of the 51st, and Lim of the 99th. Bill be entitled an act to amend Chapter 6, Title 17 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to bond and recognizance. Judiciary non civil. House Bill 663 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, Baysmore, the 63rd, and others. Bill be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 27 of Title 50 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to general provisions regarding the lottery. Higher education. House Bill 664 by Representative Maynard, the 56, Mallow, the 163rd, Stevens, the 164th, Dukes, the 154th, Gilliard, the 162nd, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend Part 1 of Article 2, Chapter 2, Title 80, the official code of Georgia Annotator relating units designed to be affixed to foundations. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 665 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 20 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to education. Higher education. House Bill 666 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to income taxes. Ways and means. House Bill 667 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st. Cannon in the 58th, Thomas the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to income taxes. Ways and Means. House Bill 668 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell the 88th, Bruce the 61st, Cannon in the 58th, Thomas the 39th, and others. 
Bill be titled Act to amend Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the Fisher Code of George Ann Taylor related to income taxes. Ways and means. House Bill 669 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Wilkerson, the 38th, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled Act to amend Subpart 4A of Article 7 of Chapter 3 of Title 20 the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to direct loans to students. Higher education. House Bill 670 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd. Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 11 and Title 48 of the Fisher Code of George Ann Taylor related to taxes on tobacco and vaping products. Ways and Means. House Bill 671 by Representative Beverly, the 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 7 of Title 48, the Fisher Code of George Ann Taylor relating to the imposition rate computation of income tax. Ways and means. House Bill 672 by Representative Beverly, 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st, Thomas, the 39th, Cannon, the 58th, and others. Bill be entitled to act to amend Article 2, Chapter 7 of Title 48, the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to the imposition rate computation and exemptions from income taxes. Ways and means. House Bill 673 by Representative Beverly, 143rd, Mitchell, the 88th, Bruce, the 61st, Cannon, the 58th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the Fisher Code of Georgia and Tate related to income taxes. Ways and means. House Bill 674 by Representative Kirby, the 114th Work High the 157th, Schofield, the 60th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 7, the Fisher Code of Georgia and Tate relating to financial institutions. Industry and labor. House Bill 677 by Representative Gunner, the 8th, Anderson, the 10th, Scoggins, the 14th, Smith, the 18th, Crow, the 110th, and others. Bill be entitled an act to amend Title 20, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to education. Public safety and homeland security. House Bill 678 by Representative Wilkerson of the 38th, Allen of the 40th, Scott of the 76th, Schofield of the 60th, and McLaurin of the 51st. Bill be entitled an act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 4 of Title 42, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to medical services for inmates. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Bill 679 by Representative Cameron of the 1st and Tarvin of the 2nd. Bill be entitled an act to amend Chapter 5 of Title 48 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia and Tate relating to ad valorem taxation of property. Ways and Means. House Resolution 248 by Representative Stevens, the 164th. Resolution designating the Savannah Logistics Technology Innovation Corridor. Economic Development and Tourism. House Resolution 249 by Representative Gravely, the 67th. Douglas, the 78th. Corbett, of the 174th. Gullet, of the 19th. Clark, of the 147th, and others. A resolution urging the United States Congress to enact legislation in the state of Georgia to coordinate regarding financial services. Regulated Industries. House Resolution 268 by Representative Neal, the 74th. <laughs> Park of the 101st, Lopez of the 86th, Moore of the 95th, a resolution urging the Congress of the United States to abolish the practice of involuntary sterilization. Public safety and homeland security. Senate Bill 28 by Senator Hatch of the 50th, Strickland of the 17th, Dixon of the 45th, Payne of the 54th, and Cowson of the 46th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 11 of Title 15 and Title 19 in the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the Juvenile Code and Domestic Relations. Juvenile Justice. Senate Bill 85 by Senator mm -hmm. Alvarez, the 56th, Strickland of the 17th, Miller of the 49th, Kennedy of the 18th, Huffstetler of the 52nd, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Code Section 16561, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to hazing. Judiciary non-civil. Senate Bill 115 by Senator Robertson of the 29th, Alvarez of the 56th, Harper of the 7th, Payne of the 54th, Cowser of the 46th. Bill being titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 5 of Title 40, the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to general provisions regarding driver's licenses. Motor vehicles. Senate Bill 116 by Senator Robertson of the 29th, Anderson of the 24th, Anna Vitarte of the 31st, Payne of the 54th. Thomason of the 14th and others, Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 5 of Title 49 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotator relating to children and youth services. Health and Human Services. Senate Bill 174 by Senator Gooch of the 51st, Mullis the 53rd, Walker the 20th, Carlson the 46th, and Brass the 28th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 6 of Title 17 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotator relating to general provisions regarding bonds.
Judiciary non-civil. Senate Bill 198 by Senator Harper the 7th, Alvarez the 56th, Robertson the 29th. Bill be titled Act to amend Chapter 2, Title 35, the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to the Department of Public Safety. Public Safety and Homeland Security. Senate Bill 201 by Senator Huffstetler, the 52nd. Bill be titled Act to amend Article 2, Chapter 2, Title 48, the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to the administration of revenue and taxation. Ways and Means. Senate Bill 215 by Senator Walker the 20th, Burke of the 11th, Butler the 55th, Hatchet of the 50th, Kennedy the 18th, and others. Bill being titled an Act to Amend Article 1 of Chapter 7 of Title 31, the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to the regulation of hospitals and related institutions. Health and Human Services. Senate Bill 221 by Representative Mullins the 53rd, Miller the 49th, Dugan the 30th, Gooch the 51st, Kennedy the 18th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 5 of Title 21 of the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to ethics and government. Judiciary. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 638 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th, Kelly of the 16th, Campbell of the 15th, a bill relating to asbestos and silica claims. House Bill 639 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th, Kelly of the 16th, and Gamble of the 15th, the bill relating to torts. House Bill 640 by Representative Smith of the 18th, Powell of the 32nd, Ballinger of the 23rd, Jaspers of the 11th, Collins of the 68th, and others, a bill relating to crimes and offenses. House Bill 641 by Representative Williams of the 145th, Jokers of the 138th, Earhart of the 36th, a bill relating to liens of hospitals and nursing homes. House Bill 642 by Representative Bernal of the 77th, Scott of the 76th, Baysmore of the 63rd, a bill relating to powers of local governments as to air facilities. House Bill 643 by Representative Bernal of the 77th, Scott of the 76th, Baysmore of the 63rd, a bill relating to tax to property tax exemptions. House Bill 644 by Representative Dreyer of the 59th, Wynn of the 89th, Jackson of the 64th, Schofield of the 60th, Robichaux of the 48th, a bill relating to post-secondary education. House Bill 646 by Representative Glanton of the 75th, Jones of the 25th, Belton of the 112th, Hughley of the 136th, Couch of the 50th, and others, a bill relating to financing under the Equality Basic Education Act. House Bill 647 by Representative Smith of the 133rd, Smith of the 70th, Washburn of the 141st, Williams of the 145th, Dickey of the 140th, the bill relating to general provisions relative to solid waste management. House Bill 648 by Representative Schofield of the 60th, Beverly of the 143rd, Robichaux of the 48th, Hutchinson of the 107th, Scott of the 76th, and others, a bill relating to handicapped persons. House Bill 649 by Representative Allen of the 40th, Wilkerson of the 38th, Cannon of the 58th, McLeod of the 105th, a bill relating to regulation of hospitals and related institutions. House Bill 650 by Representative Cannon of the 58th, Lim of the 99th, McLean of the 100th, Schofield of the 60th, Thomas of the 39th, and others. A bill relating to labor and industrial relations. House Bill 651 by Representative Gelliard of the 162nd and Stevens of the 164th, a bill to amend an act authorizing the Board of Commissioners of Chatham County to provide transit services throughout the county. House Bill 652 by Representative Ballinger of the 23rd, a bill relating to juvenile court administration. House Bill 675 by Representative Kentrell of the 22nd, Williams of the 168th, Nix of the 69th, Drenner of the 85th, Holmes of the 129th, and others. A bill relating to salary and allowances for members and officers of the General Assembly and general provisions regarding salaries and fees for public officers. House Bill 676 by Representative Houston of the 170th, Dickey of the 140th, England of the 116th, Gilliard of the 162nd, Williams of the 148th, a bill relating to agriculture. House Resolution 236 by Representative Lott of the 122nd, Green of the 151st, Perkle of the 155th, LaHood of the 175th, Gilliard of the 162nd, and others. A resolution creating a House Study Committee on the Safe Staffing of Nurses in Georgia. House Re Senate Bill 22 by Senator Jones of the 10th, a bill relating to amend an act to provide a new Board of Commissioners for Henry County. That's Senate Bill 105 by Senator Strickland of the 17th, Kennedy of the 18th, Thompson of the 14th, Anderson of the 43rd, Watson of the 1st, a bill relating to procedure for sentencing and imposition of punishment. Senate Bill 143 by Senator Tippins of the, of the 37th, Duggan of the 30th, Gooch of the 51st, Miller of the 49th, Kennedy of the 18th, a bill relating to mechanics and material men. Senate Bill 159 by Senator Gooch of the 51st, Miller of the 49th, Burke of the 11th, Ginn of the 47th, Payne of the 54th, a bill relating to elementary and secondary education. Senate Bill 193 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd, Harper of the 7th, Harbison of the 15th, Jackson of the 2nd, Hatchet of the 50th, and others. A bill relating to ad valorem taxation of property. Senate Bill 211 by Senator Summers of the 13th, bill to provide the future elections of the Office of Judge of Probate Court of Crisp County shall be nonpartisan elections through second readers.
We have <coughs> we have no reports of standing committees this morning. So we're going on now to morning orders. We are going on to morning orders. This house will come to order. Keep in mind that we are at that point in the session where the total time for morning orders is 10 minutes. Chair's not going to make any assignment of specific times. Just be mindful of your neighbor. Chair recognizes for a morning order. Representative Holly, Representative Crow, Chairman Mathiak, and Representative Scott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This morning, our Henry County delegation, particularly in the McDonough area, rise to pay homage to Mr. Bob Van Dunk. Bob served eight years in the U.S. Marines before joining the U.S. Army, the two and a half tours in Vietnam, and served another 20 years in the Army. Bob worked as a civil servant, weapons manager, and he volunteered at Stockbridge Veterans Administration Outpatient Clinic, where he saw the need to get veterans their benefits, and therefore in 2011 started the Veterans Support Group. And so we just thank Bob for his service. He's been a longtime hunter, a sharpshooter, and his uh, constant fixture in McDonough where he looked after veterans' concerns and the needs of the community. I ask you, please, let's honor him with a moment of silence. Thank you. Chair recognizes for a morning order Representative Bonner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This morning, I rise uh, with members of the Fayette County delegation to just to praise some of our community's finest. Uh, last Sunday in the early morning hours, the uh, city of Fayetteville police rolled up on a car accident. Uh, the, the automobile engulfed in flames. Officers Michael Perry and Maggie Murphy, uh, without regard for their own personal safety, uh, went into the vehicle, pulled out the passengers that were uh, in flames, saved their lives, and just wanted to honor those folks and say thank you and a special shout out uh, to Chief Scott Gray for running a great department in the city of Fayetteville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Burnow for a morning order. Chair recognizes Representative Hutchinson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Today, I'm going to extend Black History Month just for a little bit. I would like to introduce to you the first African-American instructor at Fort Gordon and also my father-in-law, Sidney Hutchinson. Sergeant Hutchinson was, was stationed in 1969 for his last station after the Korean War at Fort Gordon when he was the first African-American instructor. He taught Signal Corps, and after he retired, he became a licensed amateur radio operator and was recognized as Ham Radio Operator of the Year in 2005. He's a founding member of the East Augusta Neighborhood Watch. He secured grants for the Neighborhood Watch, partnered with local police and businesses to bring that community safety and security. He volunteered for 30 consecutive years at his church, Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Augusta, and was recognized in 2002 with the Bishop John Berry Award for Outstanding Volunteerism. And in his 80s, he decided he was bored, I guess, so he decided to take up ballroom dancing, where he was also recognized in his 80s as an outstanding ballroom dancer. 
but I think his most important and prized roles were father, husband, and pawpaw to my kids. I could not have asked for a better pawpaw. And he left us and joined his wife in September of 2019. So please help me recognize my father-in-law, Sergeant Sidney Hutchinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Becky Evans for a morning order. Well, Chair recognizes Representative Susan Holmes for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud today to honor peanut farmers of this state. They have done so much for the economy of the state of Georgia and we are indebted to this group. And today, is, as many of you know, peanut butter and jelly day. And they are providing fabulous PB&J sandwiches over in the lobby of the Floyd building. So make sure you go over. It's worth, it's worth going out in this messy weather to get one of those great sandwiches. But we are indebted to the peanut farmers of this state and I would like for you to help me give them a big standing ovation now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, final call, Representative Burnell. Representative Becky Evans. Okay, we're now going on to the rules calendar. Going on to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 244. House Bill 244 by Representative Hogan on the 179th be entitled an act to amend code section 3388.13, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the funding of services or reduction of ad valorem taxes in unincorporated areas of counties and powers and duties of governing authority. This bill having referred to the Committee on Governmental Affairs, that committee recommends that this bill do pass. The chair recognizes Chairman Don Hogan to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is House Bill 244 LC 460386. This bill passed this House uh, last session and got caught up in the Senate with the COVID. So it's the same bill that allows county commissioners to use revenues from insurance premium, taxes on insurance premiums for flood reduction. And if the county does not have any problems with flooding, they can use it to, to uh, lower uh, ad valorem taxes. And basically that's the bill. And uh, Representative Deloach was a sucker signer, so he's still following directions. I yield. Do you yield for questions? I yield, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes uh, your seatmate, Representative Meeks, up in the gallery to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does, does the gentleman yield? I do. Uh, I read through the bill, but I've not seen uh, anything related to the city of St. Simons in the bill. Can you please explain how this may impact that effort? There's no city on St. Simons. You didn't see the Rules Committee substitute, Mr. Chairman? No, sir, I did not. Somebody hid it from me, apparently. <laughs> Something about creating a new muni municipality there. I don't know what it well, is. Well, I don't know. You might have to pay extra taxes when you come down and visit, too. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> you have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield away on an ask for favorable consideration. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. 
Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 244 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 244. The ayes are 158, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. The clerk will read the caption to House Bill 443. House Bill 443 by Representative Leverett of the 33rd be entitled an act to amend Chapter 12 of Title 51 of the Official Code of Georgia and Taylor relating to damages so as to provide for new requirements re requiring the transfer of structured settlement payment rights. This bill then referred to the Committee on Judiciary. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Representative Leverett, you, uh, last time you were in the well, you quoted Porter Wagner. Is that right? Yes, sir. And then somebody last week was quoting you on Shakespeare. Yes, sir. I can't wait for today. <laughs> Chair recognizes Representative Leverett to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, I bring to you today uh, House Bill 443, which uh, is the Georgia Structured Settlement Protection Act. Uh, it effectively allows this body to protect uh, the disadvantaged from being taken advantage of by the unscrupulous. Um, it deals with structured settlements, which are uh, a rather uh, obscure uh, function in the law, at least for my practice. Um, it's a settlement in which, instead of taking a lump sum payment, you settle your claim for payments over a period of time. This does not regulate that process. It regulates a process in which someone could subsequently sell those rights and these are usually people who have who've undergone some kind of great tragedy. Oftentimes they're minors who have lost both parents. And the, the process of, of negotiating and determining the, the, the value of that payment over time converted to a lump sum payment can be rather uh, technical and, and involves rather complex financial formulas that most of us don't know. So it's very easy for someone buying one of these to take advantage of the person who's selling it. So the, the purpose of this law is to uh, amend and update existing Georgia law that already deals with this topic. Uh, but it strengthens it, it makes the disclosures broader. It, um, there's already a court approval process, but this requires that all interested parties be given notice so they can present arguments to the court, and it generally just protects the consumer. In effect, uh, this bill uh, allows this body to cast the wicked money changers out of the temple. Um, if, in this case, the temple's the state of Georgia. Um, uh, it, it, this act is already adopted in 48 of the 50 states, and I understand that New Hampshire, the other state, is considering it this session, and they uh, intend to have it passed there. So this would just update existing law, make it stronger, make it more consumer protective, and bring us into line with the vast majority of, of states who have adopted this model act. Um, and I would also note that uh, in rules, I received a question from Representative Williams, and he tells me that he is supporting the act. And so that reminds me of Romans 8.13, if Representative Williams be with us, who can be against us? <laughs> so Mr. Speaker, I'll yield the well for questions. Legislative greatness awaits you. <laughs> uh, you do not appear to have any questions. Or, well, you do have a question. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the House Ethics Committee, Chairman Nix, to your right for a question. Gentlemen, yield? I yield. Which uh, translation of the Bible are you reading? <laughs> I did say I was paraphrasing, Mr. Representative. Oh, okay, okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> you have another question if you care to yield. I yield. So may have a little biblical debate here. Um, <laughs> Representative Williams, to your left, is recognized for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? I would be glad to, sir. <laughs> Uh, that was not why I stood, and that certainly was not my question. Uh, Go ahead and ask your uh, question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In all deference to my dear friend, Representative Nix, I would like to say I predict, sir, based on what I heard, greatness for you in the future in this house. Well, you're very kind, sir. Thank you so much. Mr. Speaker, if there are no other questions. There are no other questions. I, I, I urge you to vote uh, in favor of this bill and uh, to quote that great American man of letters, Charles Barkley, I may be wrong, but I doubt it. Thank you. <laughs> I yield the will. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill <coughs> will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. What purpose does Representative Walensky rise? Thank you, Speaker. Uh, for, due to uh, Rule 133, I'd like to be excused from this vote, Ge please. Gentleman has that right, and the journal will so reflect. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of House Bill 443, the ayes are 161, the nays are 2. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 459. House Bill 459 by Representative Martin of the 49th to be entitled an act to amend Article 5 of Chapter 36 and Title 36 of the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to limitation on annexation of areas furnished services or included in comprehensive zoning plans by certain counties. This bill I have referred to the Committee on Governmental Affairs. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Chairman Martin to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, House Bill 459 uh, is very limited. It applies to Charlie Brown Airport, and it simply says that if any of the cities surrounding that want to annex that property, that they would wait and not do that until they got a resolution from the county, Fulton County in this case, uh, approving that annexation. Fulton County's done a lot of investments to the airport. It serves the region well, and this is uh, simply to keep those governments working together and provide that airport. Airport. I'm going to uh, quote Franklin Roosevelt, who said, be sincere and uh, be seated in part and uh, yield the well if there are no questions. You have no questions. The gentleman yields the will. Chair recognizes Representative, uh, I'm sorry, Chairman Oliver to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support uh, 459, but I want to bring to, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, House Bill 23, 24, and 66 that 
uh, was given a very good hearing in government affairs, and it all deals with issues that you are facing in your communities where there's growth and competition and development authorities actions. Many of the issues coming before the government affairs are about annexation procedures and bond validations and the way in which our development authorities are or are not proceeding with development. At the benefit and expense, and it's a fair argument, of your local elected officials. What is true is that all cities and counties want development. It's also true that all developing entities want tax benefits. We have very few rules and very few statutes concerning the notification to our local communities, our local school boards, our local uh, counties when a development authority is issuing bonds. And I think this is a ripe area for us to discuss in detail and at length, and I appreciate the opportunity that the Government Affairs Subcommittee Chairs and Chairs have given me to bring these issues forward. I just want to mention that the Fulton County Industrial uh, Corridor in Fulton County has been the subject of litigation since it was created in the 50s um, as a, an, an, an antiquated local legislation statute. And the litigation that's going on around me and in your counties too, outside the perimeter, is frequently about these issues of annexation, issuings of bonds, and development authorities. I just want to briefly mention I support this bill, but there's a wide array of issues that I want us to further discuss in detail for the purpose of transparency and for the purpose of your local governments being notified when these actions are coming before them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Lady has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 459. The ayes are 168, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 392. House Bill 392 by Representative Ridley of the Sixth and others to be entitled an act to amend Title III of the Official Code of Georgia annotated related to alcoholic beverages so as to provide that licenses for retail sale packages of alcoholic beverages for consumption off premises shall be subject to regulation as to distances from schools. This bill having referred to the Committee on Regulated Industries, that committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Ridley to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I bring House Bill 392 uh, to your attention uh, for your consideration also. Um, what this bill does, this, is, this bill is not putting alcohol closer to schools. What this bill is doing is giving the local authorities the ability, uh, right now it's 200 yards, this gives the local authorities the ability to, to use that yardage any way they want to. If you remember last year we had Ron Stevens' bill uh, down in Savannah, this is basically the same bill, but it's it's got to do with school properties. And where we run into this, uh, this situation is in rural areas where schools have two or 300 acres and the school's on one corner, no convenience store or grocery store can go anywhere around those, that area if there's a road across there because of the 200 yard mark. So this is just letting the local authorities do what they do. They issue the license already and it's letting them have the authority to shrink that if they need to. And that's the bill, Mr. Speaker, and I'll answer any questions if I have any. You do, you do have a question if you care to yield. I'll yield. Chair recognizes Representative Carter up in the gallery for a question. 
Uh, thank you, Speaker Roston. Does the gentleman yield? I sure do. Go ahead. In, in this bill, is there anything that would limit the distance that a local government could put in the distance between um, selling of the alcohol and one of the additional approved locations that are listed? So we can go from 200 to 10, or is there something to eliminate? There's, there's not going to be anything to limit it. Right now it's 200 yards, and so they could go anything under that. And like I said, if you've got a, a spot like where there's a maintenance building or a school barn where there's not even any kids, you still can't, under law, put a sell alcohol at a convenience store or a gas station or anything like that across the road from it. So this would just give that, them the authority to be able to, to have that ability to move the, those lines. Thank you. Do you further yield? I'll yield for one more. Chair recognizes Representative Anulowitz to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? I sure do. So is it, could we say about this bill that this is a bill that actually affirms local control? It actually does affirm local control. Well, how <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Look forward to your vote. Mr. Speaker, I'll yield the well. Gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 392 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. What purpose does Representative Wade rise? Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Rule 133, I would like to be excused from this vote. Gentleman has that right, and the record will so reflect. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 392. The ayes are 126, the nays are 35. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 466. House Bill 466 by Representative Paula the 32nd and others to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 5 of Title 40 and Chapter 13 in Title 43 of the official code of George Ann Taylor relating to driver's licenses and driver's training schools respectively so as to reduce the number of required hours in the intervention component of DUI alcohol or, or drug use risk reduction programs. This bill have referred to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Regulated Industries Committee, Chairman Powell, to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen. This morning I bring to you uh, House Bill 466. Uh, this deals with the Department of Driver Services, driving schools, and the DUI schools. Just, just does a handful of things other than just cleaning up a bunch of old and redundant uh, uh, verbiage in the law. But number one, it changes the requirements of the DUI schools from, six, uh, from 20 to 16 hours. Been several questions was asked about that. The research-based curriculum that's provided by these companies, they've been uh, changing this steadily from once upon a time it was 24, then it was 20, then it was 16, and it goes on down to 10 for smaller courses. These are the DUI courses that the offenders take, uh, and their recommendations, they have compiled these and, and shortened the courses, so they put more components into it. And from all evidence that these research-based companies, that the 16-hour course is actually more effective 
because DUI offenders, they go at currently, they'll go eight hours on a Saturday, eight hours on a Sunday, and then they're required to come back for a four hour on a Monday, which a lot of them aren't doing. So this consolidates and makes us a more tightly uh, frame of these DUI offenders and is recommended by the research-based folks that write these programs in the curriculum. Second thing it does, it allows for the driving improvement schools to use the Zoom platform in this day and time of the viruses. Uh, you know, nobody is really going into the classroom, so it would allow the uh, driving improvement schools to use Zoom. Uh, it allows third-party testers to test, do road tests for non-students. A lot of y'all may remember that last year in the midst of this virus, uh, DDS had such a terrible time that they were actually giving the driver's licenses to teen drivers without them taking a test saying just come on back later on and take the test. And this would eliminate that by putting third party testers approved by DDS out there to test these students. Uh, next, it allows third party testers to be authorized by DDS after six months training. And lastly, it just it requires notification of the transfer of one of these driver improvement schools that they have to notify the Department of Driver Services. Mr. Speaker, that's the summation of this bill, and I would certainly appreciate the, uh, the favorable consideration. Be glad to answer any questions if there are any. You do not appear to have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen of the House. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. What purpose does Representative Momtahan rise? Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Rule uh, 133, I'd like to be excused from the vote. Gentleman has that right, and the journal will so reflect. Have all members voted? What purpose does Representative Prince rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pursuant to House Rule 133, I ask to be excused from this vote. The gentleman has that right, and the journal will so reflect. Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of House Bill 466, the ayes are 143, the nays are 21. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 124. House Bill 124 by Representative Williams, the 145th, to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 18 and Title 43 of the official code of George Ann Taylor rela relating to funeral directors and establishments and bombers and crematories so as to provide for multiple cremation devices. This bill I referred to the Committee on Regulated Industries. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Representative Williams, do you have any um, uh, exhibits that you're going to show us with regard to this bill? We're looking for volunteers. Excuse me? Volunteers. Looking for volunteers. <laughs> How about if I volunteer some to you? <laughs> Chair recognizes Representative Rick Williams to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, come before you um, 
with a very simple bill. I know we keep hearing these simple bills, and this one actually came through in 2012, but the wording said you could have a alkaline hydrolysis cremation device if you had a retort also. So this is just saying you can have one or the other. This is um, recognized by CANA, the Cremation Association of North America. The Georgia Funeral Directors Association has testified they had no opposition to it. It's uh, a smaller carbon footprint, very ecological friendly, and it's also used at the University of Georgia at their Department of Veterinary Services, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, woof, woof, what can I say? If it's for Georgia, uh, and I ask for your favorable consideration, and I'll take any questions, Mr. Speaker. You uh, have a question. Yes, sir. I get from the, um, I, can, I never can remember if she's the chair of the funeral caucus or the strawberry queen. Well, she's the queen of both. Queen Mr. of Speaker. both, okay. Yes, sir. Chair recognizes Representative Bentley to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. Is it not true that um, my father-in-law owns three funeral homes in Macon, Jeffersonville, and Crawford County, Roberta, and has a crematory? Yes, ma'am, that is true. And is it not further true that uh, I do support this legislation based on the fact that uh, my family in Bibb, Crawford, and Twiggs County do not have any opposition to this legislation? And I thank you very much. The lady knows of what she speaks. Thank you for bringing thank this bill. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Speaker. You uh, have some further questions. You you want to take another one or two? Sure. Chair recognizes Representative Holcomb to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. Is it not true that there is no retort <coughs> to this retort? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chair recognizes Representative Gloria Frazier up in the gallery for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. Could you please explain this bill again? Because I don't understand what it, what, what it is. Okay, this is a method of cremation where your standard and the usual retort is done by heat and flame. This is a different method that is done through alkaline hydrolysis. This is a vessel that actually chemicals are added and the remains are liquefied. The end result is the same. It's uh, like going, whether you're going in a gasoline automobile yeah. or Thank electric you. car. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Speaker, I don't think I need to take any more questions. It's too well, close to Well, you have lunch. another one if you want to take one more. I'll, I'll finish. Thank you. All right. G gentleman is uh, afraid of the retort there, I guess. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. What purpose does the majority caucus whip Representative Kelly rise? Parliamentary inquiry, State Speaker. your inquiry. Mr. Speaker, isn't it true that we've seen this measure over a number of years, and now we need to pass it so it can finally be laid to rest? That is one way of looking at it. Uh, what purpose does Representative Walensky rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Speaker, is it not true that Beethoven got asked to uh, be buried with the work he composed so he could work on decomposing? Uh, I think that is true, actually. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? 
What purpose does the chairman of the House Appropriations Committee rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State Mr. your Speaker. inquiry. Is it not true this could be called the Smoke-Free Cremation Act of 2021? There is that. Okay. Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 124. The ayes are 169, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. <coughs> clerk will read the caption. To House Bill 476. House Bill 476 by Representative Washburn of the 141st and others to be titled an act to amend yeah. Chapter 15 and Title 43, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to professional me. engineers and land surveyors. It shows to provide that the Georgia Professional Engineers and Land Surveyors Board is an independent state agency attached to the Secretary of State for administrative purposes only. This bill having referred to the Committee on Regulated Industries, that committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Representative Washburn to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I think I can guarantee that there won't be nearly as many bad jokes uh, from the chamber as a result of this bill. I rise to uh, present House Bill 476, which very simply the purpose and intent of this is to the, allow the professional engineers and surveyors of Georgia to govern themselves. Uh, all other southern states uh, do it this way. We, we're removing them from under the governance of the Secretary of State. My long experience as a real estate practitioner knows firsthand how this works with the real estate industry being governed by the Georgia Real Estate Commission. In summary, the professional engineers and surveyors will be served well by this, but most importantly, the consumers of Georgia who use their services will be served well by it. It's good legislation, and I appreci would appreciate your favorable consideration of this bill. I'll yield any questions, Mr. Speaker. You do have a question. I would yield. Chair recognizes Chairman Workheiser. To your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentlemen, yield. I will, Mr. Chairman. I think you underestimate this chamber. Uh, when my son was going through engineering school, he was being told the importance of engineering. So he said that doctors uh, get a lot of accolades, but they kill one people at a, at a time, and engineers kill them by the hundreds. <laughs> An apt observation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What, uh, you yield for another question? I will, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Setzler to your right, he waves. Uh, Chair recognizes Chairman Dickey to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does Chairman yield? I do, Mr. Chairman. Does this bill have any, any uh, consequences in solving the uh, county line dispute between Monroe County and Bibb County? Uh, that's an excellent question, Mr. Chairman, and I, unfortunately, I don't think it will. Thank you. That appears to be all the questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your favorable consideration of this bill. Gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection? to adopting the committee substitute. The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 476 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no and the clerk will unlock the machine. What purpose does Chairman Setzler rise? Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. State your inquiry. Pursuant to Rule 133, I'd like to be recused from this vote. Gentleman has that right, and the journal will so reflect.
Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 476. The ayes are 163, the nays are 2. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 539. House Bill 539 by Representative Cooper, the 43rd, to be entitled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 34 of Title 43, the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating the Medical Practice Act of the State of Georgia so as to revise provisions relating to institutional licenses. This bill I have referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes the Chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, Chairman Cooper, to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I bring you House Bill 539. About 20 something years ago, this body saw fit to institute and to pass a bill for the medical board where they would have be able to grant something called an institutional license. When the board made the rules to that bill, they said an institution was only a hospital. This happened at a time when we were in war and there were some physicians coming from some war-torn countries that we thought we might be able to integrate them into our medical system even though they did not have the same background as our medical students and our physicians. It's been rarely used these days because of the narrow word institution and how it was defined. The board has seen fit to work with us and work with me and to expand that to an institution means a hospital licensed by a Department of Community Health, a board approved medical school, a teaching hospital in the state, or a clinic in the state that serves predominantly Medicaid, indigent, and underserved populations. Over the years, this is not opening a floodgate. We want really good doctors, but it's giving a pathway from physicians from foreign countries that are good doctors that just have a different way that, and different kind of medical uh, education background, a chance to work with another physician in their specialty area for two to three years, and then the board has a chance to reevaluate them to see if they deserve and give them a free medical license that allows them to practice in our state. We are turning away not dozens of really good physicians. I recently was at Emory. Uh, there was a young hematologist. I always say to young doctors, oh, are you going to stay in Georgia when you finish? She was doing a fellowship in hematology from the Middle East. I said to her, oh, are you going to stay in Georgia? She said, oh, I would really like to, but I can't get a license. A fellowship of two years at Emory, and she can't get a license in our state. So I would ask for your favorable consideration of House Bill 539. And Mr. Speaker, if there are no questions, I'll yield the well. You do not have any questions. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee? which was favorable to the passage of the bill. The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 539 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? 
If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 539. The ayes are 162, the nays are two. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 453. House Bill 453 by Representative McDonald of the 26th and others be entitled an act to amend Code Section 4286.1 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to special license plates promoting or supporting certain worthy agencies, funds, or nonprofit corporations. This bill having been referred to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative McDonald to present the bill. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, I bring before you House Bill 453. Uh, 453 is a firefighter tag bill, and in this legislation it was developed back in the early 80s. The only change, uh, main change in this is striking one word, which could make it complex, but I don't think it does. That it changes the word on line 14, striking personal, making it available that firemen uh, that have their have a vehicle through their LLC that on their two days off that they go and, and do yard work or do maintenance somewhere that they're able to put a firefighter tag on that vehicle right now they can only put it on a on a vehicle that is owned by them not an LLC the a firefighter tag is assigned to the firefighter it's not assigned to a company it's not assigned to to a vehicle so it always stays with that firefighter so currently, if a fireman's in this situation, he can only put it on his wife's car, which she's now driving around with the firefighter tag and not the firefighter. Uh, there's some cleanup legislation that went in, some words in here through Lake Council on in, on into the bill, but the gist of the bill is about making it where these firefighters can put it on uh, their vehicle that they drive every day. So in closing, I want to remind everyone that firefighters save more than homes. They save hearts memories, and dreams. Mr. Speaker, I ask for a favorable consideration on this bill. I yield for any questions. Do not appear to have any questions. I yield the floor. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? What purpose does Representative Roberts rise? Okay. She waves. Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 453. The ayes are 164, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Chair recognizes Representative Gullett for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Governmental Affairs will have a committee meeting, full committee meeting today at 2 o'clock in 506 CLOB. Governmental Affairs, uh, full committee, 506 CLOB. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This House will be in recess for lunch until 1245.